Uh, did you um, or did, did they tell you those allies who allow open service of gay and lesbian men and women? Uh, did they tell you that they had uh, unit cohesion or morale problems? Yes, sir. They did. And if you don't beg the indulgence, sure. Um, most of this committee knows that current militaries are a product of years of development. They reflect societies that they're theoretically paid to protect. The European militaries today are a product of the collapse of the Soviet Union. Nations like Belgium, Luxembourg, the Dutch, etc. firmly believed there was no longer a need for an active combat capability in the militaries. As a result, they declared a peace dividend and made a conscious effort to socialize their military. That included the unionization of their militaries. It included open homosexuality demonstrated in a series of other activities with a focus on peacekeeping operations because they did not believe the Germans were going to attack again or the Soviets were coming back. That led to a force that was ill-equipped to go to war. The case in point that I'm referring to is when the Dutch were required to defend Srebrenica against the Serbs. The battalion was under strength, poorly led, and the Serbs came into town, handcuffed the soldiers to the telephone poles, marched the Muslims off, and executed them. That was the largest massacre in Europe since World War II. Did the Dutch leaders tell you it was because there were gay soldiers there? It was a combination. But did they tell you that? That's my yes. question. They, they, did. they included that as part of the problem. That there were gay soldiers that there, among the, the Dutch. The combination was the liberalization of the military, a net effect of basically social engineering. 